Hello, this is Litsa. So I recently completed this pet portrait. You want to see the real one? It doesn't show up on the camera very well. It's the webcam just wants to get my face. It doesn't want to get the dog's faces. Okay, well, this this is better. Uh, well, okay, so I finished this and I think it was a pretty exciting project for a couple of reasons and I'd love to tell you all about it in the overdub of the time lapse but just to give you a little preview reason number one is I had to work from a black and white photograph so all of the color is invented I had to figure it out with color theory so we'll look at that and then reason number two is um, there's a lot of little hairs and Painting teeny tiny little hairs with acrylic involves knowing what blending mediums to use. And so I'd love to share that with you as well. So if you're ready, I think let's do this. Okay, so gosh, there was a lot of sanding. I found these, um, I found these wood panels at Target. This one is sanded down too, so you can't super see, but it's like one of those, uh, like houseware type things. Actually, my roommate found it and I was like, oh, that's perfect because it already has the mounting bracket. Getting the words off took a little bit of sanding. I thought originally that I could just um, transpose my image directly onto the wood, but the wood was too dark for the ebony pencil to show in in other videos you can see how I do I make myself a little like carbon transfer sheet thing by just like blah, putting lots of ebony pencil down and then tracing over that didn't work directly on the wood so I was like man well maybe I should use some matte medium and maybe that will work better I'm looking for it oh I threw it away so my matte medium I remember the last time I used it was in 2005 so it's 2021 now so that's how old. Uh, yeah, I had painted a painting of my niece and I used matte medium so I could have pencil integrated into the painting. Uh, but anyway, so that matte medium was super dried out. I mean, that, you know, it's been over a decade, so it's going to happen. So I ended up just using straight up gesso. I have this Windsor Newton gesso clear base, also extremely old. I didn't realize how thick it was. It's, that's very thick. So that was too thick. Um, and I had to water it down quite a bit. And then I realized, oh dang, I bought myself, I bought myself new gesso and it's nice and thin. So definitely when gessoing, it's been a while since I've gessoed because I never paint on canvas I like wood and I don't really need to gesso that I just need to like varnish it first so it's not porous but anyway um, when gessoing I think it's better to work thin and build up for me anyway but I'm always doing like very detailed paintings so I want everything to be as smooth as possible anyway so gosh the time lapse has moved far along past gesso and I'm still talking about it so let's doop, 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 skip forward uh, the background I ended up going with a teal. I wanted it to be a lighter teal than that and eventually I got there. You can see with the golden paints I have, let me show you those. So I bought, I bought new golden paints and they're really nice. I really like the viscosity of this. They're pretty thin, which is good if you want to do detail work. They're still not thin enough though. But one thing about these paints is they're not perfectly opaque and they're they're very honest about that. They show you right on the bottle that, hey, I'm, I'm semi-transparent. You know what is opaque though? Anything with white in it. So like this phthalo green, not, it's, it's semi-transparent, but, uh, Oh, <laughs> I guess I like was eating lunch at the time. So that's why the video's there, but that's okay. Cause I'm so chatty. I need the video to like, give me a chance to catch up. I want to talk about paints. Oh no, I started again. Okay. Well, so, so th things like this green are pretty transparent. The carbon bat black is nice and opaque, but most of the pigment colors are not, uh, but 
like I said before, white is pretty opaque. So that influenced how I painted this painting because I had to build up all of the darker colors. I had to build, you know, think of like an ice pond, a natural a frozen pond how it has layers and layers of ice that's what it felt like building up the darker colors it's like ugh, the first layer of paint went down and it and I could still see like my can't my gesso through it but I just had to keep drying and layering by the way um if you do not have a blow dryer in your studio you need it this is like as essential as paint. I use it so much because what I'll do is I'll lay color down and then I'll blow dry it in place and then I put on a new layer and I'm too impatient to wait between layers and when you're building up darker colors, you really need it. Uh, so there's that. And also you have a little wiggle room. As soon as you put the paint down, you can probably just wipe it off with a damp brush if you don't like it. So that's the other thing. So I lock my acrylics into place with the hair blow dryer. Anyway, so, oh yeah, you can see me using it. Uh, oh yes, yeah, so since the white is more opaque, I could count on my lighter colors going down with one stroke, which is nice. I'd rather have it that way than the other way around. So it was lots of building the darks. And then as I began to put lighter and lighter strokes on top, then I could count on it being more opaque. Now, one thing, is the golden what's the difference between golden and liquitex well these golden fluid acrylics i really like the how thin and pigmented they are the new liquitex soft body acrylics that come in this packaging is pretty thin um the older ones same same liquitex soft body these guys are actually a little bit more viscous so i think they changed their formula a little and i like the new formula better so the technique when doing any kind of fur or hair or anything, as you probably surmised, is just to start with dark strokes and then kind of comb lighter and lighter strokes on top to build up this sense of depth. And then color-wise, um, if you'll remember, I was working off of a black and white thing. I was working off of this! Uh, so color-wise, what I did is I just imagined light hitting the dog's face. And if any, any surface that I thought was on this side, I added a little bit of a, a yellow hue to it. Um, let's see. So this yellow oxide, like I just mixed a little yellow oxide into whatever paint color I was using and then if it was on this side I just left it alone so really it was the presence of yellow oxide or not now with the with Max the dog on the left he is generally cooler in color than Ruby the dog on the right and that rummaging excuse me while I rummage okay so that is just because of the presence of phthalo green or not that's the only reason so with Max, I blended a little bit of green into every color uh, that I used with him, but with Ruby, I left it out, and so she looks kind of purple by contrast. That's what my palette looks like. Uh, yeah, so okay, now I'm working on Ruby. I'm leaving the phthalo green out of the equation, so she looks a little more purple just by contrast because purple is the opposite of green um what else can i tell you because i feel like i've i've told you all the things already i forgot to mention uh, airbrush medium so i have been singing the praises of airbrush medium okay so i cannot i cannot paint without a blow dryer i can but i'm impatient but I really, really can't do acrylic paintings without airbrush medium. If you're thinning your acrylics with water, you a fool. You need airbrush medium because, this is why, because airbrush medium is a polymer, like acrylic. It's a thinner version. And 
it's formulated such that the pigment is evenly distributed. So it thins out your acrylics, which are already pretty soft because we're getting the soft body stuff, but it thins out your acrylics and the pigment distributes evenly. If you use water, the pigment doesn't distribute evenly. It's splotchy. It, it doesn't form a smooth, nice line. So folks that just have a set of acrylic and they're thinning with water, your paintings look amateurish. I mean, they just do because only an amateur would not use blending mediums. It's like the other part of the equation. It's like having a pencil and never using the eraser. If you have acrylics, you need to use mediums. Okay, I'll step off my soapbox. Thank you. See? Well, I guess Ruby went a little quicker. And I think that's because I had max practice also, one thing with Max is I, I kind of like how Max turned out a little better. I think he has a little more contrast going on, which is nice. I'm sorry, I'm looking a bit, I'm looking at it right here. Bloop. Um, but one thing I did with Max, and if I were to keep working on this painting for much longer, I would, I would just do with both of them. But uh, I think it's really helpful. I have my phone out because I think it's really helpful to take take a photo of your painting and then goof with filters. And it's kind of the modern day artist equivalent of doing this number, you know, uh, like looking at your painting from far away and trying to trying to get a new perspective on it and to see it objectively instead of being so like you're immersed in your painting and you stop seeing it, you know? So taking a photo with your phone is really helpful. Um, I, I think I'm probably telling you what you already know at this point, but with the, with the max photo, I put some filters on that and it really, it brought out color that wasn't there. And I wasn't doing like Instagram filters. I was just doing like Google's photo enhancement where it's trying to make natural stuff look more natural so it google thought that this was a dog i think and so it was bringing forward color that ought to have been there and i was like well dang google that's real helpful uh, you're right i should put those colors in so i actually painted max yesterday and then this morning i took google's advice and added just a little more color but man with ruby i was pretty tired by the time i was working on her um so I didn't go do the, the photo thing, but I think she still turned out nice. Well, maybe I want to add a little white now that I'm looking at her again. Max is just so high contrast and pretty. Okay, what else can I tell you? Because we still have two minutes left in the time lapse. And I'm committed to voicing over this. Well, what, who are Max and Ruby? So Max and Ruby, gosh, okay. So remember how my matte, my, uh, matte medium I hadn't used since 2005? Well, back in 2005, actually in 2004, but eh, that time period, I lived with a woman named Lisa Osterhout. And now she's Lisa Barber, the physician so dr barber which is awesome and her mom's birthday is coming up and her mom used to have a couple little schnauzers named max and ruby and so that's why i had to work from a black and white photo because there aren't a ton of photos of max and ruby so it's like okay well we'll do what we can with what we have but yeah those were her mom's little dogs and and her mom is super nice and um Lived, lived in Houston at the time. So I visited the Oster Hout house, house, the Oster Hout house back then. Um, or I, I visited Lisa's mom and that's great. And I got to meet Max and Ruby actually, but a very, very long time ago. They're real cute though. I'm glad I got to do a pet portrait. It's nice having like nice subject matter, you know? Yeah, and Lisa's mom's birthday is the same as my mom's birthday, I think. My mom is June 2nd, 1958. Looks like uh, we're almost done with the time lapse. Man, I should have like written notes of things to talk about. Well, hopefully that was helpful. Ooh, here comes the peeling off the tape part. That's fun.
and a little nerve wracking because you can be, a, you know, like sometimes the painting peels too. But in this case, it didn't. And then I added some ear overlapping that little frame and I called it a day. All right. Well, I think thus concludes the time lapse of Max and Ruby. I hope you enjoyed this video. And if you, I have no subscribers and no one watches these yet, but uh, if you have pointers for ways to make these more engaging or worth watching, I would like to hear them. Okay. Well, thanks. Bye.